so hello guys now we are in the part 2 of types of monitoring visit in the last part we saw what does a monitoring mean and what is a pre study visit now once we have done a pre study visit we move on to the siv so let's start the video so as we have seen in the last lecture what we saw is we saw a pre study visit and what are the uh, activity done during this particular visit in this particular lecture we are going to see the initiation visit now before the initiation visit it is very important that you have a prior regulatory approval plus the ethics committee approval once you have both the approval then only you can initiate a particular site okay so let's see what is all about initiation visit so initiation visit is also called as site initiation visit or the siv commonly okay so siv is when a research study team receives adequate training from the sponsor or the cro on the particular protocol okay so till now what happened is we introduced the protocol the pi agreed to participate in the clinical trial we did the pre study visit where we selected the site now it is time to initiate the clinical trial and before initiation it is very important that you give a thorough training to the clinical trial site on the protocol in this particular visit after the site has completed all the regulatory requirement in terms of approval from ec as well as the regulatory authority for the research study okay so only after approval as i said you can begin the siv so i want you to answer in the comment box which is the indian regulatory authority okay which is the indian regulatory authority so next point would be the siv is required to prepare and set up the clinical research site to conduct a particular study and must occur to prior to patient recruitment okay so before the site can straight away recruit the subject it is very important to have them trained about all the aspect of the clinical trial that is we have the siv okay and uh, please note that during covid time the siv was virtual but 99% of the time it would be in person okay so that the sponsor representative which is the cra uh, and even the trial manager visits a particular site and train them in person so why do we need siv first of all it is very important that you have uh, a thorough knowledge of the protocol and although the protocol is available during uh, various regulatory submission and the ec submission but training and availability are two different thing okay so site staff needs to be trained and this can be a critical point okay so this can be the difference between assessing the safety and conducting the trial in a regular format okay so next is uh the roles and responsibility of stakeholder during the siv all the roles and responsibility are clearly defined so that there is no confusion and there is a certain clarity okay in terms of uh what the roles are and what is the responsibility okay next point would be there is a thorough discussion on the protocol where all the queries are discussed how the study is to be conducted that is clearly discussed and the query is resolved okay so this brings a certain amount of understanding and we we ensure that in this particular clinical trial or this particular protocol everyone is on the same page okay so there is no uh, separate interpretation okay and all the doubts are resolved next would be what are the expectation and challenges from the sponsor and the site so all the challenges are presented from the site to sponsor okay and even from the uh, sponsor to the site okay so they explain what are the challenges and how we can counter them okay and next thing is what would be our focus on the clinical trial what would be uh, the patient recruitment what would be the timelines okay Uh, so all these are clearly explained during siv and that is why siv is required so that all these critical aspects okay can be clearly discussed so next would be what are the fundamentals of siv what are the critical activities that you conduct during the siv as i clearly explained that there is a study overview there uh, the eligibility criteria is clearly explained the procedures which would involved in the clinical trial 
as well as the access to a suitable patient population okay so which population need to be recruited what are the inclusion criteria what are the exclusion criteria how are we going to look about the subject retention okay so all this is discussed next thing is when you collect a uh, lab samples okay the blood samples or the sera samples so it has to be done in a certain manner that's why the lab manual is discussed by the lab team the requirement uh, of sample processing and shipping is discussed so how uh, the sample is to be discussed what is the centrifugation time what is the storage temperature okay once the sample is shipped then what are the uh, number of batches that you need to ship what are the days on which you need to ship the samples that comes in the lab side of the sib next thing is the regulations okay the regulatory part the gcp the guidelines how the informed consent should be taken should should it be the paper uh informed consent or should it be the avicf what are the irb obligation okay also one of the critical part is the adverse event reporting and the drug accountability okay so these are also safety related aspect which are required to be discussed during sib okay next part would be once the data is generated once you have considered uh, conducted the visit the data forms that requires to be reviewed including the case report forms okay how is the data recorded that data has to be entered into the ecrf okay and how should that be so that is also discussed and clearly explained then the regulatory documents okay the files such as the isf or the patient folders okay so those are also clearly explained demonstrated so that site can enter the data in an appropriate format according to the good documentation practices and also all the regulatory requirements and guidelines as per the 21 cfr subpart d which clearly demonstrates or explains the uh, responsibility of the sponsor and the investigator regarding patient safety and the conduct of the clinical trial is explained during the sib okay so when you see all these points clearly defined it it encompasses all the aspects of the trial okay so that is a thorough foundation on which you can build the clinical trial site now what are the activities to be completed by a site monitor if you are a cra and you go for an sib what are the activity do you do first of all you do all the protocol related training okay that is why you go there and note all the queries and discussion okay because each and every site will have a different set of queries and that has to be discussed in a different manner so that the central message and the protocol can be clearly conveyed okay so clarification and the query resolution is uh, different next thing is you have to also look at the documentation okay so the site delegation log has to be completed who are the pis who are the cois which team is going to be in the blinded form which is team is going to be in the unblinded uh, team then we have to note the siv attendance sheet who all attended the siv are they related to the study all that has to be documented next is the pertinent essential documents needs to be collected for the records uh, which can include if there is any pending uh, cv of the investigator if there is uh, any uh, lab accreditation uh, pending if there are uh, any calibration certificates okay uh, pending so all the essential documents needs to be collected during the siv next part would be the uh, and this is one of the most critical part is interaction with the pi and crc okay and that to in person because once you meet in person you get to understand their perspective very clearly it also aids in developing a cohesive bonding and understanding because 90% of the time you are not going to be at the site and you are going to be communicating through emails and phone calls and there should be a clear understanding a good first impression in front of the site and the principal investigator so that uh, you conduct the uh, clinical trial as smooth as uh, possible and uh, there is a very clear understanding and bonding between the trial uh, site okay and the uh, study personnel next would be after the training is given after you get to know the site and uh, you look at all the aspects then comes the essential part of discussion on recruitment strategy so you uh, assess and discuss what is the recruitment potential what is the recruitment strategy how are we going to conduct the trial what are the challenges that you think you would face 
and what uh, and how the safety uh, even should be reported because essentially you do a clinical trial be, uh, for safety data okay that is one of the critical part and that has to be reported in a certain format okay under reporting or over reporting can have a very higher implications okay in terms of the uh, drug effectiveness and that can compound uh, to the understanding also okay so that has to be discussed next part would be the siv uh, report okay once the monitor is back from the siv he prepares the siv report uh, and uh, he documents all the activities conducted the trainings the documentation the discussion on strategy recruitment and he also lists clear open actionable items at site that this particular action items are pending and we have to resolve in certain manner so that is the activities to be completed by the site monitor okay so once the siv is conducted what is next so based on the siv uh, conducted by the sponsor himself or the sponsor representative uh, which is a cra okay so the siv report is prepared and the, all the relevant documentation is uh, presented to the study sponsor so that he gets a clear idea that all the protocol has been thoroughly explained all the activities are, are being explained and post siv the sponsor is ensured that all sites are adequately trained okay so that there is certain informity and the site shall moved in a desired manner and can initiate the recruitment activity okay so from siv onwards the site can recruit subject okay so what happens after the subject recruitment then the trial starts and then there is a regular monitoring visit which is also called as periodic monitoring visit okay so what is periodic monitoring visit this is going to be a major chunk of the entire monitoring visit because the uh, pre study visit or the siv is one or two days activity but periodic monitoring is a continuous activity and this uh, we shall look in the part 3 okay of the series so uh, please mention in the comments how you like this series and please stay tuned for the next part so if you are someone who is looking for a job in clinical research who is looking to make a career in clinical research then uh, look no further our friends at clinical aim research are doing an excellent job by offering a 3 months advanced certification in clinical research with uh, the fundamentals of clinical data management and pharmacovigilance so even if you don't know anything about clinical research they will teach you about everything and they will also prepare you for the interview which was the purpose of this video so you have to not only learn the concept but be prepared for the interview so please go ahead and contact uh, on the given number and uh, you can enroll yourself in this excellent and amazing course so have a look at it and finally if you like this uh, video please make sure that you subscribe uh, like and share this video so that we can ensure that proper clinical trial knowledge is being transmitted to all the interested parties and we can stay updated so we are clinical aim research and thank you